All right, guys, I'm back, part three. I, the hardest section because you're combining skills, you know, radical skills from this chapter, quadratic skills from the last chapter. The, the big benefit for this is when you get into geometry next year you will, and algebra two beyond that, you'll be much better with quadratics, okay, and factoring. And, and we're going to do the factoring method. Unless you could bring in completing the square. You could bring in the quadratic formula. Uh, you know, I wrote problems on this page that are factorable because I think that's an important skill to review. Um, you're certainly welcome to use either of those other methods. If you love quadratic formula, go for it. So, um, are we having fun yet? Same deal. Square both sides, and you'll see where this thing turns into a quadratic. When you square the y, you get y squared. And you go, oh, how do I solve that? Same as we did in the last chapter. We've got to bring everything over to the same side. So add y over here and subtract the 6 over. And you get something, and of course I put it all on the left side. It doesn't matter which side you put it on. You get something that I, that I wrote that was factorable. So think of your binomial that gets you to 6, or factors of 6 that add up, factors of negative 6 that add up to 1. Think of your two binomials that are going to allow you to factor this thing. Great time to pause and try to do every problem on this page on your own, because you now have enough information. The two on the bottom are a little trickier, but you certainly could do these two problems from here on out. Um, maybe pause and, and then let me go again, but I think it should be y plus 3 and y minus 2, which gives you two solutions here negative 3 and positive 2. And, and it's very important now that you double check those. You plug them back in and check. So if you were to, something interesting is going to happen here for some, some of these sometimes. If you plug in 2, you get 6 minus 2, which is 4. The square root of 4 is 2, which would make sense because you're going to plug in 2 here as well. See if it works if you plug in negative 3. If you plug in negative 3 here, you get 6 minus negative 3 which is really 6 plus 3, which is 9. The square root of 9 is 3 on this side of the equation. But think about what you're plugging in on the other side. You're plugging in negative 3. 3 is not equal to negative 3. So only one of these two solutions works in this case. You know, I'm just showing that the 2 works because you get square root of 4 is equal to 2. The one, on the, the, the one when you plug in negative 3 does not work. Not, 3 is not equal to negative 3. So you like one of the solutions, you don't like the other one. You know, this is a situation where you only accept the correct answer on there. Sometimes the negative would work in this case. In this case, the positive only worked. Positive 2 worked. Negative 3 did not. So again, try this one on your own. Good time to pause and get after it. If not, square both sides, and you get 8k minus 12 with no square root sign equals k squared. Get everything on the same side. So I added the 12 over and I subtracted the 8k over, and I like to just see it on the left side. You can do it either way. I could have moved this stuff over here. Nothing wrong with that. Go for some factoring. And it's important we review factoring, because the chapter 12 we're going to do soon, we're going to get back into some factoring here pretty soon. Factor to 12, hopefully you're thinking 6 and 2. And they have to both be negative in this case, because they have to multiply to get positive, add up to negative 8. And in this case, both of the roots or solutions are positive. And if you were to plug those in, you'd check to see if they work. So I'm going to plug in the 2 for k. I'm going to plug in the 2 here. And you get 16 minus 12, which is 4. And if you plug in the 6, you get 48 minus 12. Set that equal to 6. If you were to simplify this radicand, you get 36. Well, yeah, the square root of 36 is 6. So 6 works. You try the 2. 16 minus 12 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. They both work. Sometimes they don't both work, like we showed over here. Sometimes they do both work. That's the whole reason you check them. An important, important aspect of geometry is solving and then plugging numbers back in to see if they make valid solutions or what the solutions mean. Hopefully you look at these bottom two and you realize there's something a little messier about these. First of all, I wrote this equation wrong on your paper. I'm going to say you probably want to move the radical symbol over to here on your paper. Uh, my apologies on that one. This one's okay. I think if you have the radical over here, it's not going to work, or it might work. It won't be factorable anyway. So, it's on this side. We're going to square both sides, though. Squaring this, we're just going to get x plus 3. Squaring this, you don't get x squared plus 1. Remember, this is a binomial times a binomial. You're going to get a trinomial on this side. So hopefully you understand that it's x squared plus 2x plus 1. This is x plus 1 quantity squared, which gives you a trinomial. Now you go into, the, just like you did in the last problem, you get all the, everything on one side. Subtract the x over, subtract the 3 over. I think you get something like that. 
x went down by 1, 1 was subtracted from 3, get negative 2. And then again, you're going after the factoring machine here. Factors of 2 have got to be 2 and 1. They've got to add up to positive 1. So I think x plus 2 and x minus 1 gives you two solutions, negative 2 or positive 1. Plug them both in and see if they work. There's a situation where one of them is not going to work. 3 plus negative 2 is actually 1. The square root of 1 is 1, but it's not negative 1. So the negative did not work in this case. If you plug in positive 1, you get, you know, 3 plus 1 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. And of course, I'm simplifying the right-hand side. The 1 plugged in here, 1 plus 1 is 2. So one of those solutions works. The other one does not. We keep the bottom one we like. You know, and on your homework, I want to see all this work, but I'd like to see the answer at the end as well. Hopefully that's correct. All right, one on the right, same idea. You square both sides. Here you're going to already have a trinomial. Here you're going to get another trinomial. Good time to pause and attack it on your own. Hopefully end up there. Get everything on the same side. There's something really nice about this. Think about what you can do with the g squareds. Cancel them out on both sides because they're you know you're going to subtract them from both sides. Really nice. Subtract the 14 over here. Subtract the 8g from 9g and you immediately have an answer of g is equal to 2. Plug that in, so you plug in the 2 here and you get 6. Plug in 2 here, you get 4 plus 18 plus 14. And add up all that stuff and see if it actually works. Well, let's see, this is 22 plus 14 is 36. The square root of 36 is, in fact, 6. So that one works. So it's a valid solution. We're happy with that. Um, if you're smart, you're going to grab an Algebra 1 book and you're going to start this assignment right now. This is the type of stuff you want to be working with somebody next to you that's doing the same problems or with a substitute teacher. A teacher can check your answers as you go through it. Um, you may want to be smart and check the odds as you go through. Not a super hard assignment. You might find this section a little easier because it, you know, once you square both sides, it turns into a linear equation or a quadratic equation from something you've done before. Hopefully I made sense here. Um, there is one last question at the bottom of your page that says, what would cause a radical equation to have no solution? There's two situations we talked about. Either you're taking the square root of a negative or you take a square root and you get a negative would make no sense. You know, or you, you plug a solution back in and it doesn't work. So maybe there's a third way of explaining that. There might even be other ways of explaining that. So make sure you acknowledge that last question on your page. It's one you have to think about. I've kind of talked about some things. Put it in your own words. And uh, it's important to put that in your own words. Get that you know, last little sentence on there, two sentences on there to explain it on there. Good luck. I'll see you back. I'll be back Tuesday. Have a great day. Again, tell your parents to vote. We want the school board school budget to pass. We want to get you know want you guys to get your uh, get your funding, and we want some teachers to be hired again. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.